Welcome back to SkiBoatPartsOnline.com Ski Boat Service video. Uh, in a previous video uh, we looked at uh, excessive rudder play. Um, so now we're going to go back and revisit this. Uh, in another video we addressed the rudder port uh, issues that affected the uh, side to side play that you're seeing here. Um, but in this video we're going to address the bigger problem and that was excessive uh, steering cable play. Something in the steering is drastically wrong with this boat. There should be no way that much play in a rudder. So we're going to take a look at uh, what I found and how it's corrected. So stay tuned and we're going to go ahead and get this one fixed. Okay now we're inside the boat and here is the steering clamp block assembly and support tube holding the steering cable. Um, a little rotational play here uh, is normal, but this one is excessive. The ball joint is worn. But the real culprit is the uh, standoff bracket is extremely worn and allowing the entire support tube holding the steering to move. This boat has over 900 hours on it with all original steering cables and components. We're going to replace the steering cable. This is what we're going to start with. Then we're going to change the, the remaining steering components in the back of the boat. Um, this boat is equipped with the Teleflex Big T steering system. These cables are virtually non-existent today, so we're going to be replacing it with the Teleflex uh, Quick Connect steering cable, which will require the steering cable adapter. And you'll see how that's done. It's a simple process. Um, so here we go. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is find a large wrench and turn the large nut loose uh, attaching your steering cable. Once it's loose, uh, then you can start turning the steering wheel to unthread and push out the old cable. Now be prepared, it's going to be a greasy mess. Uh, you may want to take the plastic sleeve that comes with the new cable, take it off of its uh, greasy end and slide it on this one temporarily uh, to keep the boat a little bit cleaner. Okay, here I'm borrowing the new uh, plastic sleeve that came on the new cable and slid it over the greasy end, getting ready to attach a piece of rope uh, to the cable to pull it through the bilge. Okay, here's where you're going to need your roll of duct tape and a length of rope, uh, 15 or 20 feet is plenty, and you're going to tape up the old cable to a piece of rope and uh, make sure you tape around that large nut generously uh, because as you pull it through the bilge, you don't want to get hung up on an opening or something else. You want it as streamlined as you can possibly make. Okay, well, we've jumped ahead a little bit. I've already pulled the old cable out back through the engine compartment. Um, now, in this case, the engine is removed. We're doing a complete restoration on this boat. But it's the same principle. When the motor's in the boat, you're going to want to pull that rope all the way out uh, from behind the motor. Um, then you're going to attach the new cable to the same rope and pull the new cable back, reversing the steps you just took, and pull it up through the front floor into the uh, steering helm area. Next, you're going to take your new steering uh, cable adapter, thread it onto the helm assembly, and tighten it. Then you can grab the uh, new steering cable and take that uh, protective plastic sleeve off the greasy end of the cable, uh, push the greasy end of that cable into the adapter and start rotating your steering wheel to thread it in. You're reversing the steps so uh, that you did when you took the old cable out. Uh, the only difference is now when the cable is near to the end uh, you'll hear a distinct click when the cable housing enters that new quick release fitting. Uh, to release that, uh, there's a supplied uh, uh, hairpin that comes with the adapter and instructions on how to release it. So it's now a quick connect uh, helm assembly. Now we're going to go to the back of the boat and start uh, looking at that end. Okay, now we have the uh, new parts installed in the back of the boat. You have a new long post clamp block assembly. You have a new support tube. The support tube is the aluminum tube that the new steering cable uh, is threaded into and passes through. Uh, it's not uncommon for the support tubes and the old steering cable nut to become seized together. 
Um, I could spend an hour trying to break it loose uh, and maybe salvage it, um, but it's cheaper to just buy a new tube, put the whole new assembly together, uh, than spending an hour or two trying to break it loose. So you have a new support tube and a new clamp block assembly. Now this simply shows the entire aft end steering arrangement completed. Uh, one thing that's important, and I'm going to show this in a video, is the clamp block, where it clamps around the support tube, there are some critical things here. Uh, you can adjust that fore and aft uh, where you want it, but there is a correct way to do this, and I'm going to go into a video to show how that's done. Another thing to remember when you're assembling the uh, clamp block uh, is to make sure you put plenty of heavy grease in the ball joint area. Um, that ball will ride inside these two halves and you can see the dark blue grease, uh, a heavy trailer axle grease. The heavier the grease you can find the better here. Okay all the pieces now are installed and everything is tight except for the four bolts on the clamp block uh, around the support tube. I want to be able to slide that tube back and forth to get our proper adjustment. Uh, we want to maintain some angle between the tiller arm and the steering cable. Now I'm pushing the cable back, sliding that tube through the block, getting it perfectly straight. That is a no-no. You do not want it straight. That would allow the cable to break over center and allow the rudder to travel into a spinning propeller. Uh, that's never a good thing. So you want to make sure that there is some angle between the tiller arm and the steering cable. Um, you know, I'm going to tighten these bolts up and uh, then we're going to go ahead and check it uh, to make sure that we're uh, maintaining an angle here. Now you can see uh, what the proper angle should look like. Again, I apologize for the poor lighting, but uh, we'll work on that. Okay, we're about done here. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is rotate the steering wheel back and forth to make sure we're having proper travel, proper angles. In this case, the tiller arm uh, is within a, about a 32nd of an inch of hitting the transom wall. It's very close, but you don't want it touching if you can avoid that. Uh, but that's less important than having the proper angle preventing that tiller arm from breaking over and going into the rudder. Uh, so I hope this helped. Uh, stay tuned for some more videos.